Hi everybody and welcome to the class. Um, I think we have people from Lyon in France. Yesterday we had people from Peru in Salaman Salamanca in Peru and Lima. So I think we have people from lots of different places and in Madrid and in other parts of Spain. So possibly this class will be difficult because we have people from different parts of the world and the level of English is very different for lots of people. And I am sorry if it's difficult for you to understand and uh, yeah it's 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 a challenge it's very difficult because there's lots of people with uh, different levels and yesterday I spoke a lot in Spanish so today I will try to speak more in English okay and um, it might be difficult but let's see okay so I'm at home and um, I have a new location so we are seven people at home the house is very busy and finally I have a little space here to teach some classes with a little privacy so fingers crossed that I can continue in this location and um, it's possible we have a little interruption with family and uh, the dog I have a dog also he's a husky so hopefully he's not interrupting so if I have to uh, go or you hear a lot of noise hopefully everything is okay the same with the connection and the internet I hope the connection is okay and the internet is good as well so why the free classes? Basically, it's an opportunity for me to reconstruct my work and to rebuild after Corona. So during uh, the summer in May, I had to stop because it was impossible to continue teaching. So finally, now I have the opportunity to teach and to uh, work a little. So fingers crossed, everything is okay. Also, it's a very good opportunity to teach for free. Um, I know there's lots of people uh, unable to pay for classes and uh, I hope this can help some people as well so that's the second uh, reason it's completely free but at the end if you want to give a little contribution or a little support a little tip it's possible as well and um, okay so we will begin basically we begin with an introduction then we analyze an article from the newspaper to look at vocabulary and grammar and then finally we look at phrasal verbs which is a concept and idioms as well like expressions so on the left you can see this is just a logo but this is just an apology for the communication that maybe it's very very difficult if you do not understand me speaking this is a text to explain and to apologize that I understand it's difficult to uh, to understand English okay so that's in Portuguese Italian Korean and English Spanish and French okay just a little introduction to say um, I'm sorry and I understand it's very difficult to to listen to a, a native speaker so fingers crossed everything is okay then finally as I said the contribution or the tip that's possible at the end if you're happy that's PayPal um, a little one euro or two euro if you can but if you cannot afford it absolutely don't worry it's I don't expect it and don't want it okay because it's completely free okay so this document every class I begin with this document and I give this document to every new student because in my opinion it's the most important information and the foundation for learning English so during the class I explain some technical vocabulary I use some technical vocabulary so before and now it's a good opportunity to explain the technical vocabulary first for five minutes okay every morning is the same every day is the same because it's the foundation and it's the base and I want to just really uh, emphasize the key techno uh, the key uh, technical vocabulary first because during the classes I speak a lot about phrasal verbs idioms uh, substantives adjectives adverbs modal verbs um, articles lots of technical vocabulary that's necessary to introduce first okay so here you can see the document and in my opinion there are three sections that are very important the use of English is an important section the tenses or the times is the second and grammar in general is the third you can see here okay but really for advanced English and for proficient English to master the native language and to be very familiar I think it's necessary to understand phrasal verbs the concept of a phrasal verb basically is a verb and a preposition so sometimes it's literal and the second time it has a double meaning and that's the problem with the significant with the phrase of verbs for example come in Spanish is venir come to the city come to the shop but across is the preposition so come across is literal 
come across to the shop, come across to me, but the second significance means to find. So when you're cleaning your room, when you're searching your room, you come across a book to find unexpectedly. Para encontrar eh, con sorpresa in Espanol. So to find unexpectedly is the significance of to come across. So that's very strange English and it's a difficult concept. Some of you are familiar with phrasal verbs and other people have no idea. So this area is very important for sure. And today we will look at phrasal verbs. Also, we have <coughs> idioms, which are like phrases hechas in Espanol, expressions. And a famous expression is a taste of your own medicine. So, un sabor de tu propio medicina. Um, and I think in every most languages, it's the same concept. It's a, a taste of your own medicine. That's just one example of an expression. And in conversation in English, it's very normal to use idioms and phrasal verbs all the time. With my family, with my friends. All the time we have phrasal verbs and idioms. Okay. Accents, different accents in English is very important. We have a different accent in Dublin, a different accent in Belfast, in London, in Scotland, in um, United States, in Australia. The accents are very, very different, and that's a big problem when you're studying English as well. So that's you can you can prepare the book, you can look at the book, you can read the grammar. But really to understand accents is a big issue and speaking is another big issue so you can see here conversation and speaking are very important with accents so for me this area is maybe the most important when you're learning english okay so just to practice the pronunciation here really it's a list primarily for spanish speakers with the y the j the sh the g the j the g so yellow jacket cash register a jet engine, fragile, jealousy, yearly, chicken and kitchen. So for some reason in Spain or in Spanish, people confuse pollo and cocina. But of course in English they're very different. But that's just an example of the difficulty. So it is very hard. It's not easy to learn English. And I hope I can help just a little with this class by class every day to do a little. And it's, it's hard work and it's definitely not easy. Okay. The next concept are the tenses. Or the verbal times okay and I'll just make this a little bit bigger if I can um, and every language has verbal tenses and verbal times and basically it's the moment you speak so are you speaking in the present speaking in the past speaking in the future so there's a few concepts we have the simple simple present simple past simple future one action you do in the moment I drink one action you did in the past and usually, frequently, it's possible irregular. So I drink, I drank, and the future, one moment in the future, I will drink. The construction is the verb to be with will, I will drink, okay? That's the simple. Then we have the continuous, something you are doing continuously in the present, the present continuous, I am drinking. The past continuous, again, something you did in the past continuously, construction is the verb to be with the gerundio, the gerund, I was eating and then the future continuous I will be eating as well okay so they're the three uh, times or tenses for the continuous we also have the simple and the perfect so we have the perfect we have the present perfect which is one period in the past that's finished one action and period that's finished and it's related to the present and the construction is the subject the extra verb have and the participle for example, I have eaten my breakfast, so it started in the past and it's relevant to the present because at this moment I am not hungry, but it's finished. So I have eaten my breakfast, so now I am not hungry. The past perfect is the period in the past before usually another action in the past simple. So the past perfect construction is the subject, extra verb have and the participle of the verb. For example, I had eaten my breakfast when my friend contacted me so usually you have a past simple after okay in spanish i think it's similar con haber and in french i don't know exactly or portuguese i'm not sure but uh, that's the perfect and we also have the future perfect which is a little more technical and a little more uh, advanced but i will have been okay is possible the future perfect so that's the simple the continuous and the perfect so for today it's just a little introduction for the simple, continuous, the perfect, and also the infinitive.
So the concept of the infinitive in English is to. To eat, to go, to drink, to have. So the base or the foundation of the verb is to. To eat, to drink, that's the infinitive. Okay, in Spanish it's para beber, para tomar, para ir. Okay, but in English it's to, to go, to eat. The conditionals are a little heavy with the theory. So we have the zero conditional, the first conditional, second conditional, third conditional, and mixed. So the theory is a little, little heavy for sure. But in reality, it's a little more flexible and not super strict in reality. Okay, basically it's connected with if. In the situation or the condition if. If I win the lottery, I will buy a house. If I visit my friend, I will bring my jacket. If I had won the match, I would have been happy. It's about if. That's the area of the conditional. It's a very complicated and theor theoretic area, but in reality, it's a bit more fluid and a bit more flexible. Okay? And finally, for today, um, the concept of the active and the passive are very important. So the active, you have the subject, you have the verb, and you have the object. Okay? So the subject is the man, kick is with the ball, kick the ball, patear in Espanol. The man kicked, and it's the past simple, and the ball is the object. That's the active, and then the passive, you change the position. So the ball, extra verb to be, auxiliary verb to be in the past, because kicked is in the past. So the ball was, participle, kicked by me. That's the passive, okay? So you have the active and the passive. And that concept is important in grammar. Good. Very good. So that's a bit heavy, but every day I try to explain the tenses and the use of English and the grammar because during the class I use the technical vocabulary a lot and it's very important when you learn English. Every level, beginner, intermediate, advanced, proficiency, the concept and the foundation is the same. Okay? Now, the grammar, just one or two more concepts of the substantivo. So basically, we have a noun or a substantivo, like a person, a place, or a thing. That's a substantivo or a noun. We have an article. So, for example, house is substantive. A house or the house. So, a is the indefinite article because it's any house. And the is the definite article. So, the house or a house. We have one rule, an exception. So, if the word begins with a vowel, a bocal in Espanol, if the word begins with a vowel, it's necessary the an, okay, an apple, and there we have a house. We also have the concept of countable and uncountable substantivo, so the house, is it possible to count the house, one house, two houses, three houses, yes, so a house is countable, but water, is it possible to count water, not really, because we count a glass of water, a bottle of water, a litre of water, but for one, uh, it's impossible to count water, so it's uncountable, okay? And that's an example here. And it's very important in relation to how much or how many. And that's the key. So how much is related to uncountable, how much money, how much chocolate, how much water, and how many is related to countable, okay? How many books, how many houses, that's the key. A lot is possible with everything. A lot of water, a lot of houses. So for me, a lot is very flexible and it's good to use. Then the adjective. So basically an adjective describes the substantivo. So the house is the substantivo and big is the adjective, big house. In English, the position of the adjective is before the substantivo. In Spanish, it's the opposite. In French, I'm not sure, even though I have a degree from university in French. At this moment, I cannot remember. But basically, in English, it's an adjective and a substantivo position, okay? And the adjective describes the substantivo. Next, we have an adverb. So the concept of an adverb in English is to describe the verb. For example, verb to run, and the adverb is quickly. And the ly is usually the, usually the suffix for the adverb. Slowly, uh, softly, quickly. That's the concept of the adverb. In Espanol, it's mente. Lentamente, suavemente, uh, rapidamente. Mente is the sufico. Okay? Then we have modal verbs. So modal verbs are a category. Very flexible and very common. Very, very frequent in English and very important. So the first modal verb is can. And it's related to ability and permission. So my ability. 
I can swim the ocean. I can run a marathon. I have the ability. The second one is permission. I can go to the shop. I can enter the composite competition. It's permission and ability. The next three could, may, and might are possibilities. So we use could, may, and might for possibility. I could swim uh, in the ocean if I wanted, but I'm not sure. It's a possibility, it's an option. I could run the marathon, but I'm not sure if I want to. It's a possibility or it's an option. Also the same, may and might. The difference, may and might, are maybe a little more formal or a little more um, polite. That's the principal difference between may, might and could. But generally they're very, very similar. Okay. Shall is probably older English and more formal and it's connected with should and will so shall we go to the cinema is will we go to the cinema or should we go to the cinema it's just more formal and it's a little older should is for recommendation and advice consejo in espanol so should is for uh, advice you should go to the doctor you should speak to your friend it's a advice or recommendation you should watch the movie that's typical for uh, the modal verb should and ought to is practically the same. Ought to and should are practically the same. Again, ought to is maybe a little more formal and a little more polite. Very uh, much more polite, in my opinion. You ought to go to the cinema is very, very polite and very uh, serious and formal. Must is uh, obligation. So you must eat the dinner. You must contact your friend. And the pronunciation in Ireland, sometimes with the U, is very strong so in Ireland sometimes the pronunciation is must Dublin butter bus so phonetically that's probably not the the phonetics in the book and the books are probably probably is Dublin butter bus but in Ireland the U is interesting for pronunciation okay the rule after the modal verbs we have a rule we have the next verb in the infinitive but we eliminate two always so we have the modal i must i may i might i can the next verb is the infinitive without the two so i must go i may walk i might talk and that's always the rule very important with the modal verbs okay the error and the mistake is i must to go i must to have that's the error okay very important uh, prepositions so in English we have a lot of prepositions and it's related to movement and position so my hand in front of my hand behind my hand on my hand beside my hand over my hand below my hand we have many many prepositions and they're so important in English we have I think 150 and they're related to movement and position okay and for phrasal verbs you remember the concept phrasal verbs the prepositions are key and fundamental okay so they're important with the movement and remember with emotion so in phrasal verbs the preposition is usually associated with emotion for example up is positive down is negative that's the usual feeling or sentiment with prepositions okay also the difference between the possession possession the pronoun and the object pronoun for example my hat your hat his hat her hat but it is mine it is yours it is his that's a tricky area for sure and many people confuse this area for me in Spanish and French I definitely confuse the pronouns if it's possession if it's object so that's a very important area in the future if you want to prepare and study yourself okay and um, then the demonstratives is a category but don't worry I don't use that word a lot but this that these and those is really important to understand the difference between the the meaning and the significance so for example this is singular a key in Spanish a key this here that singular away these plural here and those plural away okay so it depends on the position but it's this that these and those that's very important for the to be clear basically with another and other so the difference is another is for singular another day another week another year and other is usually for plural other days other weeks other years and remember the phonetic of the th 
probably the book phonetics would be other so again in Ireland the pronunciation of the th sometimes is like a D in Ireland we say other very frequently which is not phonetically correct um, from the book so phonetically it probably is other like como zeta in Espanol just to remember okay um, and then questions okay and then concept of suffixes and prefixes I speak a lot about the suffix and the prefix and for example if the suffix is I Z E it's a verb if it's A B L E usually it's an adjective if it's L Y usually it's an adverb if it's A N C E usually it's a substantive like importance so that concept is very important and it's a good help when you're studying English or preparing English to identify the prefix and the suffix okay linkers conjunctions however although um, and you have more advanced linkers as well so that category is very cohesive important for connecting and making more fluent okay so that's it uh, now you understand English perfect you can finish you can go home that's perfect um, you're a master everything is great and um, no that's just the introduction of course and that's just a little explanation but it's very very important because um, it's the same all the time and it's the foundation and it's so so important also writing is a completely different skill and a completely different talent and it's very important and then exam preparation is typical as well and that's it okay the Cambridge exams the IELTS so I'll close that well done very very good so today now after the grammar and explanation I want to show you an article so this article is from the New York Times and it's very very good English of course very fluent and it's a review of a trip to Dublin of an experience to Dublin so it's a review and usually reviews are very colorful with vocabulary very descriptive and very entertaining and this is the case with this article so last week I began with this article in my class and we completed two pages and today we will continue with page three okay so I'll just introduce it a little there's the introduction a few pictures of Dublin and it was written by this man or woman I'm not sure who it is and the date was just before the pandemic okay so remember when everybody was able to travel and uh, do tourism and visit places so it's a distant memory now but that is the context uh, the context of the article okay so an introduction and last week we explained the introduction and here's the map and some places of, from the article of Dublin um, Stevens Green if you remember some people have visited and uh, Friday so last week we explained this part also but today I want to show you part two so at five o'clock on Friday this is the activity in the review of the man or the woman who visited Ireland so for English I want to read for pronunciation I want to um, read the text to pronounce and to hopefully help with pronunciation and after the paragraph I will analyze the vocabulary and explain the grammar concepts because here I have a document with the most important vocabulary from the text okay and I want to explain in detail the prepositions the tenses the past perfect the present perfect just to illustrate and to show in reality okay super so here we go smoke and strong whiskey you can smell the teeling whis whiskey distillery well before you can see it the first new distillery to open in Ireland in 125 years it's located in the Liberties a neighborhood accustomed to the smell of barley and hops okay because in the 19th century it was home to dozens of distilleries and breweries Teeling's hour-long tour starting at 17 euro per person includes a tasting details the long history of Irish whiskey making and takes you through the working distillery where you can watch the worth fermenting in wooden fermenters and whiskey being distilled in giant wooden stills the tour ends in the bar where the guide leads you through okay a tasting of single grain small batch and single malt whiskies so some vocabulary is obviously very specific to whiskey and this area and tourism so um, 
it's not very common in this area but I will explain the grammar points here okay so smell is very important verb to smell como oler in espanol como oli bien oli malo a good smell so the verb is to smell and the substantivo is a smell okay an adjective is also smelly so I put here in my notes um, because I want to show you my notes here and I will just write the concept so the verb is to smell the substantivo is the smell and the adjective is smelly okay and obviously a little insult as well for some situations the smelly place the smelly restaurant or even the smelly person if you want okay so that's the verb and the substantivo and the adjective okay so here's the smell and this is an interesting concept you can smell the uh, distillery before you can see it but here we have well before so if you say I arrive well before two o'clock or I will meet you well before six o'clock it means mucho a lot I will meet you a lot before and here well before is a lot before okay so you can smell the distillery a lot of time before you can so that's an example of the modal verb can remember ability you can have the ability to see and remember after the modal the next verb is the infinitive see comma para ver but we eliminate to in this case so you can see it that's a good example of the modal okay here we have the preposition to open in for the country in Spain in France in Peru in Italy in Ireland in for the country okay and um, and also in 25 years so in the space of 25 years dentro so we have 125 years and it's the first time to open a distillery in this time so preposition in in relation to time okay again location preposition in and the liberties is the name of an area or a neighborhood in dublin it's an area so for position and preposition we say in okay um, neighborhood is very interesting so here we have the spelling in the United States so this is interesting but very simple so a neighbor in the United States is with OR okay but in the UK it's OUR okay so in the UK the spelling is a little bit different and um, very very important but also the concept of a hood so in Spanish a hood is a capucha so you have your jacket and you have your hood very important but the concept of neighborhood so your neighbor in espanol is vecino and the neighborhood is basically all the neighbors because you cover the neighbors como un capucho and that's the concept so the neighborhood is the area but we have a lot of other words in relation to hood parenthood motherhood childhood and the concept is it's covered all the years so your childhood is maybe from five, six, seven, eight until 13, 14. That's your childhood because you can cover with a capucha, with a hood, okay? So neighborhood, childhood, parenthood, all the years that you are a parent, motherhood, all the years you are a mother, okay? So that concept is very, very important. And here you can see the computer is recognizing the US version so here neighborhood accustomed to is very similar in spanish acostumbrar say a but the typical preposition is accustomed to and also in english we have used to so i am accustomed to the weather i am used to the weather there's two structures that are very important and i will put it here so i am accustomed to the weather is the same as i am used to the weather and that structure is very confusing and very important because we have another verb to use which is utilizar so it is a little bit different and in espanol use is utilizar or usar pero aquí con el verbo to be used to is something in the past you were accustomed to or you did in the past for example i used to swim in the past uh, it's a habit or something i did in the past regularly i used to eat I used to go I used to visit my friend but not anymore not today okay so that's an important concept we have two possibilities the verb to be used to and the second verb to get used to okay 
and it's the same with accustomed so I get used to sorry for my spelling my fingers are a little cold um, I get used to and I get accustomed to is like the verb to become so in this case get is like the verb to become and become in Espanol is llevar a ser a transformer transformer okay so to get used to is become used to and to be used to is a little different in the moment in a different state so just be conscious and be familiar with the difference between I am used to and to get used to okay so here it's accustomed to the smell of barley and hops so this is vocabulary very very specific for the industry and in Spanish barley it's the product to make beer so when you make beer you have the barley and the hops I don't know the vocabulary in Spanish or, Fran or French but that's the ingredients when you make beer you have the barley and the hops and in Spanish it is here uh, apenas no sorry that's that's different that's uh, I think it's the spelling is wrong barley yes with the E yes it's, it's different so this is the real word that I'm looking for it's the ingredient cebada okay and in French just to be clear you like my uh, the dictionary I have here it's very important so barley in French is uh, here and orge okay and hops I don't know if they'll have the translation here in French but uh, that's the verb but we don't need the verb we need a substantive um, houblon maybe okay you get the idea it's the ingredients for the beer okay so you can smell the barley and hops because in so the preposition for the century we use in in the 19th century in the 20th century so the preposition in is used for the century okay and also the pronunciation here is the 19th uh, in Espanol it's do um, tre, I think em and in East, sorry in French it's em but in Spanish it's different again and in English it's 19th 20th first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh that category that vocabulary is very important as well okay home too so that's a typical preposition as well dub we connected with home dublin is home to trinity college dublin is home to uh, stevens green so basically trinity college is uh, positioned in dublin it's just a little structure very simple not complicated okay dozens so just the pronunciation a dozen is 12 and I think it's a similar in Spanish dozena and in French probably it's the same as well Portuguese I don't know so a dozen is 12 and um, there's one expression we say it's like six in one hand and half a dozen in the other it's a very famous expression when you want to say something is very very similar you say it's like six in one hand and half a dozen in the other that's a very famous expression okay so I'll write that here it's like it's uh, equal but different so that's the concept it's uh, like six in one hand and half a dozen in the other okay so very very famous expression and very good and later I will put the notes below the video in the comments as well and the material here for the highlighted vocabulary I put everything in the video so you can see and have it for yourself Um good so a brewery again so the verb is to brew and it's a very interesting verb and for a storm or for tormenta in espanol you can say a storm is brewing so a storm is um starting it's beginning and um, in an argument with a friend or f uh, a group you can say a fight or an argument is brewing so you can identify the beginning of the argument you can identify the tension and it's possible to say a fight is brewing very advanced vocabulary and very very good English very native and very fluent also in relation to the kitchen and tea and coffee it's possible to say to make a brew which is to make a tea for your friend so I can say to you do you want a brew and that means do you want a cup of tea a little informal but very very conversational okay um, and in relation to alcohol and beer that's the process they brew come out there in espanol to make the beer okay and then also singular is a brewery so the brewery is singular and then plural um 
we change the Y. So normally with the Y in the singular, the plural is IES. Okay, so the normal change from singular with Y is IES in plural. Okay, breweries. And that's just the detail of English, and that little detail always is very important. For example, sky, singular, okay, and then plural is skies. All right, just a little small information, but very important to remember always. So again, preposition in relation to price. So the price starts at 10 euro, and it increases to 12, 13, but start at. So if basically for location, we normally say at. So I meet you at the cafe, I meet you at the corner, but also in relation to time, we say at. I meet you at six o'clock because it's specific location in time and specific location in place. And the same concept with price. So the price begins or starts at two euro and increases. Okay, very simple, but very, very important as well. This is a comfortable expression and very nice, okay? So take you through is a very, very good expression. Through is the preposition, a través in Espanol, and through the street, through the people. But to take, tomar, you, take you through, is to explain everything to you. So today in English, I want to take you through the article, I want to take you through the grammar, I want to uh, accompany you or explain to you or teach you all the information to take you through very interesting concept not too difficult but very fluent okay takes you through the distillery where you can so that's another concept another example of the modal verb ability and permission and again the next verb is to watch so again the difference between to see and to watch see is just in general and watch is more focused so this is the reason television you watch television because it's more focused but you see the birds or you see the nature because it's just in general okay and here normally the infinitive is to watch para ver but in english after the modal can we eliminate to okay another good example here is the verb ferment very specific verb for uh, alcohol for beer to ferment and it's possible for problems if you have a problem and the problem ferments it's like quedar in Espanol, to stay. Um, if the problem ferments, it stays for a long time and it's very bad and it's difficult to remove. That's to ferment. Because for the alcohol and the beer, they leave, the jar, they leave the beer in the bottle for a long time to ferment. Okay? And here it's the object, a fermenter is the object. So the verb is to ferment. Here the suffix is ing, fermenting, the gerund. And also we have an adjective wooden. So wood is the adjective madera in Espanol. And sorry, the substantivo wood. And the adjective is wooden. Okay, very simple example. But the detail is very important. Substantivo wood and adjective wooden. Okay, and it's in because it's the machine or the container. It's in, in dentro. Okay, here is the verb to be and the participle of the verb distill. So here's a question. Do you identify what tense or what verb this is? Because it's an advanced structure and it's an auxiliary verb to be and it's a participle. So that case is the passive, okay? So I distill the whiskey, but the whiskey is being distilled by me. So that's an example of the active and the passive. And in this case, it's the passive, okay? And again, specific vocabulary is a still. That's specific vocabulary for the object to create alcohol. Okay, but separate, we have another use or another significance of still. We have two or three significances of still. So the first one is calm, very calm. So very still. For example, the water, the ocean, the sea is very still, which means calm. Okay, it's typical in school for the children or at home. You say to the children, stay still, like no movement, stay calm, no movement. Okay, so still is like calm. The second significance in Spanish is like todavía or aún. So I still don't have my book. I still don't have my vaccine. 
it's aun or todavia in espanol so that's the second significance and here it's the third significance in relation to the specific vocabulary to make the product in the still okay and that's the situation here then the next example of the preposition is for the tour is the subject ends is the verb and in the bar so the bar or the pub and the typical preposition is in in the room in the cafe in the bar because it's a room and it's inside okay the next verb is very interesting as well the verb to lead so the subject is the guide and the verb is to lead okay in espanol it's liderar and here is the verb to lead and it's in the third person so it's with the s because it's I lead, you lead, he leads, and normally the third person, tercera persona, has the S. I go, you go, she goes, and here it's the guide leads, um, and again a good preposition through, leads you through the tasting. So very similar to the previous example, takes you through, but leads you through, practically the same. Okay, but also in relation to lead, we have a grammatical concept, a grammatical combination with lead lead to and this is very important in relation to this verb so lead to it's like the consequences and I'll give you one example the bad weather in the past the verb is to lead and it's irregular led so the bad weather led to the cancellation of the match okay so the verb is to lead and the past simple is irregular led and with the preposition to it's in relation to consequences and that's an example so the bad weather led to the cancellation of the match and there's one typical expression as well we say one thing una cosa liderar a un otra cosa one thing leads to another that's a conversational expression as well so um one thing leads to another that's very fluent and very conversational as well okay so led to is uh, important and i'll just put the past here as well led is the past irregular okay and very very good in relation to consequence so here again um, leads you through a tasting of a single grain and again that's very specific uh, vocabulary for the alcohol and the beer like the brewery the grain is like the barley I think it's the vocabulary uh, of barley and hops we have one expression in relation to grain so you have the wood the madeira and in the wood you have the grains okay and the expression is to go against the grain so the majority of people do this action the majority of people behave or do this action but you have one person who goes against the grain okay who uh, does something different or does the opposite to everybody that's a famous expression because the grain is possible in the wood in the madeira okay so that's a very very important expression to go against the grain also we can say uh, with swim nadar to swim against the tide and the tide is in the ocean we say the tide is in or the tide is out in relation to the water like the current so they're two very very good expressions but it's a little bit different here it's not the grain with wood it's the grain in relation to the product in the agriculture for the farm like the wheat and the barley very specific and difficult vocabulary okay this vocabulary is very, very good. A batch, a small batch. It's very typical for agriculture. When you grow plants or when you grow food, you have a batch. A batch is like one group or one collection, similar to advanced vocabulary crop. So we have a crop and a batch. Very advanced vocabulary, but very fluent and very important. Um, a batch or a crop, but very flexible and very common in English. So a batch is like um, one collection of the agricultural product in the farm. After three months, you grow the product and you collect the batch. So, but it's related to people. So in the army or in the school, when you have the new students that enter the school or enter the army, that's the new collection, the new batch. Okay. In my house with the CDs or the movies, I have a batch of old movies, a collection or a set. So simple vocabulary for natives, but very important when you learn uh, English, okay? Um, also, in relation to batch, we have the bread. So it's very typical in Ireland 
to go to the shop and get a batch of bread uh, actually a batch loaf very difficult loaf but batch is like one collection of the bread you know it's slice and it's one packet so a batch is like one packet in that case okay very very good um that's a little explanation of the grammar and every day I like to explain one real text from the newspaper, from magazines, from real situations. It's very important to analyse the vocabulary, the grammar, but also at the beginning it's very important to explain the concepts of the grammar and the technical vocabulary. So also, which is very important, I want to show you an example of phrasal verbs and idioms. So here we have three pages, but the first page is in relation to prepositions. So basically we have maybe 150 prepositions in English, and this is a um, summary or the majority of the prepositions here. And this is available on the internet and I can put the link on the page as well. But it's a very typical list of uh, prepositions and it's necessary to understand the prepositions absolutely fundamentally first before you continue with English and before you understand phrasal verbs. So prepositions are very important but next this is a list of phrasal verbs. We can see here on the left the verb come and we have the preposition and we have the significance. It's possible literal but it's possible a second significance as well. So this is a big document you can see 20 pages and last week we have completed first page second page a few pages and today we are on page five so I want to explain a few of these and after this I will go to some idioms here okay idioms are like expressions so first the next expression the next phrasal verb we have yesterday we finished with come the verb to come preposition with like a company or include so if you buy a phone and the phone comes with a bag so the phone includes a free bag that's very simple so the product comes with something extra uh, the job offer comes with a car comes with benefits comes with an advantage okay so comes with is to accompany or include okay and here's the example from yesterday the computer system does not the negative does not okay come with a printer so the printer is not included and in print is imprinter and the object para imprinter is the printer for the computer and the paper okay now we move to the next one here on the top right and we have a verb to count okay count for example one two three four five that's the count but when we include the preposition in it's very common in conversations for example my friends go to the party and I say count me in count me in, include me in because we say John is going Peter is going Susan is going Sharon is going so you count include count somebody in the opposite is to count somebody out so if you're in it's positive if you're out it's negative so here you can see the third example count somebody out is to exclude so to include is to count somebody in and to exclude is to count somebody out okay very important the second example is the preposition on for a person okay and relation to the verb depend to depend on me depend on you because on is usually for a surface for example on the floor on the roof on the person because the person is really a, a surface as well so depend on me is the same as count on me you can count on me you can depend on me so the phrasal verb is to count on somebody similar to de depend and the second verb is very important as well to rely so everybody knows the verb to depend but the second verb is very uh, advanced to rely on so you can rely on your friend you can rely on the internet you can rely on the dog and the adjective is very important reliable okay so to rely on is the verb is the same as to depend on and the adjective is reliable very advanced very fluent and very important a little better than depend and the negative is unreliable okay so that's very good expression with the count on somebody um, last week we had another example lean on 
So lean is like inclinar. In Pisa, in Italy, you have the torre, the leaning tower. Pero um, it's possible in English to lean on is for support or up, apoyar in Espanol. So lean on me is similar in the concept to count on me. Very typical in conversation. Finally, the fourth one uh, or the next one, count up, is very literal, very logical. So you have zero, one, two, three, and you count up. That's the significance of the preposition because it's direction. So you count up and the same with count down. You know, for the new year or for a celebration, you have 10, 9, 8 because you count down. And the opposite is count up in relation to calculations or to add. I have 10 euro and 2 euro. I need to count up and I have 12 euro. Okay. We move to the next verb to cross. So cross is the verb in football. You cross the ball. In ordinary English, you cross the road. And in relation to cross out is with the paper and the list. Imagine the nightclub or the disco and the security man has the list. And you tell the security, my name is Brian, I'm on the list. And the security man cross out your name. Okay, so that's the concept of the cross out. It's flexible. For example, your friends go to the party and you say, no, no, I'm not going. So they cross you out. Maybe a little flexible, but that's the concept to cross out. Okay. The next one is very, very good to cut the verb to cut, cortar, cut the hair. Cut down is a very good phrase, a verb in relation to reduce the quantity. So, for example, coffee. I drink three, four coffees every day. So, my doctor recommend to me to cut down on my coffee. Okay. So that's the concept and very uh, important. I spend a lot of money every week on chocolate. I spend 10 euro every day on chocolate, for example. So I need to cut down on my expenditure or my spending. Okay. And that's the exp uh, explanation here to decrease the amount of. And here's the example. You eat too much. Too much is demasiado. And fat is uncountable. Remember the example in the introduction, fat is not possible to count. It's impossible to say one fat, two fat, no. We say kilograms, one kilogram, two kilograms. So you eat too much. And too much in Espanol is demasiado, excessivo. Okay? You need to cut down. You need to reduce or you need to decrease. And the second one is exactly the same. But when we have on, it's necessary to substantivo. I think that's the only difference. But don't worry, it's not a problem. Um, so you need just to cut down. But you need to cut down on chocolate. So if you want the substantivo, you need on. Okay. Cut in is very interesting as well in relation to a conversation. So to interrupt is the translation. And again, cut is cortar. And in is to enter. Because you have the conversation here. And you want to enter the conversation. But a little rude, mal educado, a little impolite to cut in. Okay. And that's to interrupt. And again, the second example with on is just for the substantivo. Cut in on my friend, cut in on the conversation, cut in on. No problem with the extra on. Cut off is very, very good when somebody is speaking. So your friend is speaking, 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 and you interrupt your friend and you stop your friend speaking. You cut your friend off. Okay. The same with electricity in the house. If you do not pay your electricity, if you do not pay for your water, the company will cut you off. Because usually on is good. For example, the light is on. On is positive and off is negative. So to cut you off is to stop something. And it's typical in conversation to stop the person speaking. And as I said, with electricity or water, the company cut you off. Okay. It's possible with a relationship as well. You can cut off a relationship. It's understandable. It's logical. But we always say break up or uh, break or separate or uh, cut off as possible as well. And then um, the next ones are logical. Cut off is logical. Cut off. That's logical. And cut out is the same. So in the newspaper, you see a picture and you want to cut the picture out. So it's logical and literal because you take out the picture. And for the newspaper, we say in the newspaper. I read in the book. I read in the newspaper. But television, it's on the television. Okay? And the same with cut up. So cut up is... Sorry, there's two more. Um, the second example of cut out is 
a good example so the first example cut out is to remove so that's literal but the second example is a little more flexible yes it's the same concept but it's related to behavior comportamiento comportier when you behave with the children good behavior and bad behavior so for example my dog if my dog is barking and making noise I can tell my dog to cut the barking or cut the noise out like to stop making noise or to stop uh, the action or the behavior okay and that's the example so here it's very famous to say cut it out so stop the action stop the bad behavior and you are bothering me so the verb to bother in espanol is molestar to disturb and in conversation in ireland it's very very common to bother uh, to disturb to annoy and it's very typical in conversation here to say no bother so if you ask me brian can you send me information can you send me an answer and i say no problem no bother exactly the same three possibilities no bother no problem no hassle okay because we have another verb to hassle and here it's molestar in espanol so very good vocabulary to bother to disturb to annoy to hassle and it's to stop an action and then finally cut in relation to up is quite literal as well so i have a, a bag an old bag or a credit card two typical examples old bag and credit card and i cut my old bag but i cut up means totally so if you cut up it's more up with total so the connection of up is associated with total so you cut up the bag it's completely credit card you destroy the credit card you cut up the credit card but emotional is possible as well if the person is cut up they're completely destroyed they're emotionally very very sad they're very very uh, cut up so that's very typical as well um, and a good example of the flexibility of phrasal verbs okay well done so tomorrow and um, we will continue with d and little by little it's a good way to improve phrasal verbs because in reality in native conversation in fluent conversation they are so so common and we speak so quickly with phrasal verbs with prepositions sometimes frequently often it's very very hard to catch the significance and it's very very hard to really understand the real significance so i recommend that you spend time to really master the phrasal verbs because for me they're a big part and the secret to really fluent english okay so that is the phrase of verbs and the prepositions and also we will continue a little with idioms so idioms are like expressions or phrases hechas in espanol and yesterday we stopped with donkey's years and the donkey in spanish is burro so you have the horse but the donkey and in english we can say donkey's years and the significance is muchísimo tiempo like a lot of time so i have not seen present perfect i have not seen my friend in donkey's years in a long 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 time that's the typical expression and um, the next one is also very common don't count your chickens before they hatch so count is obviously one two three your chickens i have one chicken i have two chickens but the verb to hatch is related to the egg when the egg breaks and the chicken leaves the egg that's to hatch the egg is hatched so the expression is don't count don't think you have the chicken until it has completely left the egg because always there's a possibility of a problem you have to be prepared and you have to be ready okay and also with hatch um is to create so to hatch a plan is the same as to create a plan okay and in the shop the second significance for the substantivo a hatch is typical in the shop on the street and the front window so today with the corona it's impossible to enter the shop so you need to take your coffee from the hatch so the hatch is the little window at the front of the shop that's a hatch okay so it's a little flexible uh, to hatch a plan and the egg has hatched so hatch a plan is probably the same concept at the beginning to create a plan okay so the next one is a phrase of verb to give up rendirse in espanol to give up to quit so you're doing the marathon you're running the marathon and after two miles you're very tired so you give up you quit but the 
expression or the idiom is do not the negative do not give up your day job and that's a joke because for example if I try to sing and now if I try to sing and really my voice is is very bad for singing your advice to me is Brian do not give up your day job so keep your job because you have no opportunity to make money or to make a career as a singer so that's the famous famous expression and it's very conversational and um, in families they say it all the time of course don't don't quit your job because you're terrible at the other thing <laughs> um yeah okay and then the other example is don't put your eggs in one basket which is probably the same in other languages so you have the basket when you go shopping in the supermarket you have the basket to put the products and the expression is don't put all your eggs in the one basket so don't invest all your energy in the one item and um, because it's possible you can lose all of your investment that's a famous expression so don't put all your eggs in the one basket to double date or a double date so a date is como salir con alguien in espanol in cita a romantic date but to double date is when you and your partner go for a meal or go for a restaurant or a, to a cinema or to a restaurant with another partner another couple that's the double date okay another vocabulary is blind date so blind is cuando no puedes ver blind and a blind date is when you meet the person for the first time without having seen the person so it's possible a blind date or a double date okay double date and blind date um, good vocabulary for sure and then another expression for sure is drastic I think it's similar in Spanish drastico so very serious very severe drastic times call for drastic measures so a measure is medir for example liquid you measure the liquid one liter two liters the height one uh, one meter two meters that's to measure medir but also in politics or policy or for rules this is the measure this is the rule so drastic actions so for example drastic times like today the pandemic drastic times call for require drastic action drastic measures okay very very good and uh, here finally we have a few more so to draw the verb to draw is obviously dibujar in espanol like painting draw a picture draw a, a painting dibujar but there is a second significance in english that's very very important to draw if you have an infection in your hand and you want to draw the infection out it's extract okay if you walk down the street and your uh, jacket is multicolor and yellow and lots of colors people look at your jacket so you draw attention to yourself you attract attention it's the same in the house you have the press and the cajon in espanol you have the table and the drawer because you have to extract the drawer and here it's in relation to the pistol remember the cowboys many many years ago and they have to draw the pistol it's like extract the pistol and blank is when it's empty and when it's nothing so if you draw a blank you try intentar para tirar you try to shoot but you have no ammunition so that's a metaphor for lots of situations so if you draw a blank you try to do the strong action but you have no uh, ammunition or no action and here's the example to get no response oh sorry so to get no response from somebody you ask them a question okay so it's the same concept okay and then drop out is very typical as well drop in espanol is gotiar and substantivo a drop out is in relation to college and university in particular the context because you're in college you're in university pero dejar you leave college um before you're supposed to so you are a dropout kanye west had the famous album i think high school dropout okay so that's important and then finally we'll finish with d because this one is also very 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 important and very common to dwell is like to live so for example i dwell at the moment in dublin i live and this is my dwelling this is my home okay that's the concept to dwell is to live or to stay and this is my dwelling with the place where i stay but the metaphor is in relation to a, a thought or an idea you dwell on the idea you dwell on the emotion you dwell on the uh, problem it's to stay on the problem to stay on the thought 
or to stay on the idea so to dwell on the problem and it's typical advice to your friend you say don't do not dwell on the situation don't think too much about the situation don't overthink over analyze okay very good so again for me this category of idioms is so so common for native conversation and fluent conversation in movies in family in every situation so important and also phrasal verbs are very important again so for me that's a big big area of english the use of english phrasal verbs idioms conversation pronunciation accents okay but well done that's a uh, great work for today a lot of uh, vocabulary and a lot of work so i will close that and um that's i think enough for today so thank you very much um i'm very happy to teach for free and uh, it's a lot of work so well done if you want to make a little support and if you want to give a little tip or pro puar i think in espanol or in french i checked my pronunciation today it's possible um there is the information if you want to make a, a donation of one euro or something it would be very grateful but remember I'm very happy to teach for free at the moment because I know a lot of people have uh, no access to education, no access to um, learn English and people maybe cannot afford to uh, take classes and I know there's lots of people in, in, uh, in every part of the world at the moment that can connect on the internet so hopefully this can help a little. Um, and um, yeah, for the moment for the pandemic, hopefully in this location I'm able to continue teaching from here. So day by day, because it depends on the environment, depends on the house, depends on the situation. But hopefully I can continue a little and uh, it's a good opportunity for me as well. So thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your week. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you and bye bye.